Welcome in to Drew Daily Diamond for Saturday, August 10th, 2024. I am Drew Martin breaking down the slate, coming to you from Veracruz, Mexico. We got some day games, night games to get into. Let me know in the comments below what your MLB picks are for today, for this weekend, where you agree, where you disagree, all is welcome. Smash that like button if you're liking the content. As we got first game up, South Florida, 410 Eastern, 110 Pacific, San Diego Padres at the Miami Marlins. Rodri Munoz on the hill for the fish. Matt Waldron going for the Friars. Minus 165, that's Waldron and the Padres as the road favorite. Eight in the hook being the total. Padres come in 12 games over 500. Winners of five straight, 14 and two. Their last 16 coming into the series. They're up against the Fish, what, 30-ish games under 500. They gave up 32 runs to the Cincinnati Reds in the series before this. Kind of speaks to the Marlins. You know, they were they were trading a lot of arms. We talked about this on the Friday show, guys. I think they're going to really start to show um, in terms of their bullpen production down the last 35 games of, of the season here. They traded away a lot of talented bullpen arms. And now they're up against the Padres, who are number two hitting team against righties. They're facing a righty here in Munoz. Munoz has a six ERA, a seven FIP on the season. I think he's going to have a rough go of it. And Waldron, the starter here for the Padres, the 27-year-old out of Nebraska, the former Cornhusker, he's a knuckleballer. You know, he gets that knuckleball dancing. He's got 116 strikeouts on the season. And he actually faced the Marlins earlier this season, which – Yes, the angle of past performance is normally in the betting markets, but there's another angle here that you're not going to really find in the stat sheet. And sometimes those can be the best angles to kind of get an advantage in the sports betting marketplace. And it's Waldron throwing that knuckleball or throwing that knuckleball. I like to bet on them against kind of younger team, uh, younger age teams like the Marlins are. They got young talent, but they really haven't seen a, a lot of knuckleball pitchers and another angle is you know the mar this is coming from a lifelong marlins fan guys they have a lot of like latin cultured players making their way up you know from south of the border uh from the dominican republic things of that nature spanish speaking players that when you look at that profile of what they've faced before their major league career th there's not a lot of knuckleballers that come up from that kind of pedigree so I don't think a lot of these guys have seen knuckleball pitchers throughout their career. And sure enough, it shows. He actually faced this Marlins lineup in May. He went seven innings, zero earned runs, eight to one strikeout to walk ratio. A uh, dominating start there. I think it's going to happen again here, guys. I, I like this Padres side. Uh, you know, for the show, we'll go minus one and a half on the run line. Reduced juice, minus 105. But I mean, like just like the Friday show, if you're a gambler, you know, that that alt line on the Padres, two and a half, three and a half. I think they win in blowout fashion here, guys. So let's jump on the Padres to lead us off over the Marlins afternoon start time. Nation's capital up next, L.A. Angels of Anaheim at the Washington Nationals, 645 Eastern start time. It's Griffin Canning on the hill for the Halos. Patrick Corbin, the lefty going for the Nationals, minus 115. That's the Nats at home. Nine in the hook being the total. The Angels come in winning winners of four of their last five, all as underdogs coming into the series. They're now uh, uh, going with Canning, the second rounder out of UCLA. He gave up three hits last time out against the Mets with eight strikeouts. Like that uh, kind of last time out, the velocity was up as well. I actually have Griffin Canning circled his bet on here. And he's up against the Nationals, you know, uh, what, three and eight, their last 11 coming into the series, not playing their best baseball. And they got Pat Corbin on the hill, the 35-year-old. He's just throwing like 90, 91 miles per hour. He's actually been rocked, 20 hits, 15 runs his last two starts. And he's pitching off of four days of rest, an angle I like in this one. Each of the last three times he's pitched, off of four days of rest or less, he's gotten absolutely rocked. So I, I, I don't think this is going to be a good start at all for uh, Pat Corbin here. Uh, we're jumping on the Angels, listing Griffin Canning. I think it's wrong team favored. So we get the Halos, minus 102 over the Nationals. Next game up in Minnesota, we got 7-10 Eastern start time here. Heading to the night slate, Gavin Williams going for the Cleveland Guardians. Simeon's Woods Richardson going for the Twins. Twins minus 120, eight in the hook being the total. They had just had a doubleheader on Friday, so something to watch here in the bullpens. And Williams going for the Guardians, first rounder out of ECU. 
He did give up six earned runs last time out against the Orioles, but he was solid in five of the six starts before that. He's a guy I actually look to be betting on. Um, he throws 97 miles per hour. I, I'm looking to bet on Williams overall, and nothing against Richardson, the twin starter, for his full season. But in recently, he, he gave up 13 hits, nine earned runs, and six walks in his last seven innings. That's over his last two starts, so he's not lasting long. He's getting hit around, and he's having some control issues here. It's going up against the Cleveland uh, offense that overall is pretty good. Um, another one, guys, might be wrong team favored here. Let's list Gavin Williams as the starter, plus 105. That's Cleveland over Minnesota. 810 Eastern start time. It's the Atlanta Braves, Colorado Rockies. Max Freed going for the Bravos. Cal Quantrill going for the Rocks. 10 in the hook being the total. Minus 185, that's the Braves as the road favorite. Braves come in, what, losers of five straight into the series. Uh, the Friday night's game has not played yet, but uh, either way, I mean, the Braves not playing great baseball. They're minus nine units the last week before, before this series starts, so not looking to bet on the Braves. The only thing with this one is Max Freed, he's pitched three times in his career, great career overall, including in Colorado. He has three starts, 1.6 ERA, sub one whip. So he's been tough, tough to hit in Colorado. And Coors Field, the thin air is not affecting him. I could see him actually having a good start here, guys. Now he's up against Quantrill, who has a sub four ERA at home. He's one of those Rockies pitchers that, for whatever reason, pitches better in Coors Field. I was looking to get on the Rockies. You know, we've been betting them, if, if you've been watching the show, when they're at home getting plus prices, which they are here. But that Max Freed past performance in cores is going to keep me off of it, guys. Instead, hey, the Atlanta Braves have started to struggle against righties. The Rockies don't hit lefties well. Max Freed's pitched well in Coors Field. And we just went over it with Quantrill with the home road splits being better in cores as well. Ten and a hook being the total. I don't think we get to double digits, guys. I know this, is, uh, this isn't going to be a best bet by any means. But uh, I, I think this one, you know doesn't touch doubles. So let's go 10 in the hook. Let's go under 10 and a half Braves and Rockies. Last game, uh, we'll head to the Pacific Northwest. But first reminder, if you could comment below, it helps out the algorithm. Smash that like button if you're liking the content, guys. And we got premium picks up, wagertalk.com, Drew Martin's experts page, college football, NFL right around the corner. And obviously baseball going strong here in the month of August. All right, 940 Eastern, 640 local time, New York Mets, Seattle Mariners, Shamanaya on the hill for the Metropolitans, Logan Gilbert going for the M's. Minus 130, that's the Mariners as the home favorite, seven being the total. There is juice towards the over. Mets, we talked about this one as well because of their schedule spot, guys. New York to L.A. to St. Louis for just one game. Colorado now on the last stop here of this road trip. This is one of the most brutal road trips probably of the season here. Now they're out in Seattle. And the Mets coming into the series have gone seven straight unders. And they got Manaya on the hill. Back-to-back -back starts, seven innings, blanking the opponent. The guy's got 21-to-1 strikeout-to-walk ratio his last two times out. That's the reason I'm not going to look to go against the Mets, because I think Manaya is going to have a good start here. He's up against Gilbert, the first rounder out of Stetson for the Mariners. His last two home starts, he's been great. 13 innings, two earned runs, 15 to one strikeout to walk ratio. He's got a lot of talent. I think he could have a good start as well. This total is low. Both bullpens have pitched a lot better. Um going to go under here, guys. I think I wouldn't be surprised if this one, you know, ends one to nothing, three to two, something like that. So we get a total of seven plus 105 on the under some plus money, guys. Let's go on the under Mets and Mariners to end the Saturday card. In recap, we got the Rockies and Braves under 10 and a half. We got the Cleveland Guardians plus 105 over the Twins. The Angels minus 102 is a slight dog over the Nationals. And for the best bet for the show, we are on the Padres, listing Matt Waldron as the starter, minus the run line, minus 105. So that's going to do it for the Saturday show, guys. We are off on Sunday. Uh, be back on Monday. Come back and join us. Until then, have a fun, safe rest of the weekend. Cash those tickets. Smash that like button. Thanks for tuning in.